After verifying the cylinder bore, measure the piston ring end gaps by inserting each ring individually into the cylinder. Measure ring gap as detailed in the latest revision of Service Bulletin SID 97-4. Verify that all dimensions are within the limits specified. The cylinder must be thoroughly cleaned prior to assembly and installation on the engine. Clean the cylinder bore thoroughly using a solution of mild liquid dishwashing detergent, warm water, and a stiff bristle brush. Rinse the cylinder using warm water, completely dry, and coat the cylinder bore with clean 50 weight aviation oil. Notice, when installing a new piston, weigh the removed piston or the piston of the opposing cylinder and ensure the new piston is within the weight limit specified. Replacement pistons must have their installed position number stamped over the piston pin boss one half inch from the edge of the piston using a one eighth inch number stamp. After piston ring gaps have been measured, install rings on piston using a piston ring expander or by hand using thumb pressure taking care not to scratch the piston. When installing piston rings, ensure the ring is installed with the part number or the word top facing the top of the piston. Install the piston rings in the following sequence. Install the oil control ring expander in the third ring groove from the top of the piston. Install the oil control ring in the third ring groove from the top with the ring gap 180 degrees from the gap in the ring expander. Install the number two compression ring in the second ring groove from the top of the piston. Install the top compression ring in the first ring groove. Invert the piston and install the oil scraper ring in the fourth groove from the top of the piston. Verify that all rings are installed with the word top facing the piston crown. Measure the ring side clearances in accordance with the applicable engine overhaul manual maintenance manual, and service bulletins. Position ring gaps so they are staggered 180 degrees apart from each other, beginning with top compression ring in the 12 o'clock position. Now that we have detailed the inspection process, let us prepare the cylinder assembly for installation. Ensure the rocker shafts are installed in their respective location and secured before installing the cylinder on the crankcase. Identify the cylinder position by stamping the position number on the base flange at the 12 o'clock position so that the number will be visible when the cylinder is installed. Install a new cylinder base O-ring, ensuring that the O-ring is not twisted when seated against the cylinder base flange. Next, coat the cylinder bore with a liberal amount of clean 50 weight aviation engine oil. Coat the piston and piston rings with a liberal amount of clean 50 weight aviation engine oil. Position the piston so the position number is facing the propeller. Using a piston ring compressor, insert the piston and piston rings into the cylinder, leaving the piston pin bore accessible. Repeat this process for any additional cylinders and pistons to be installed. Lightly lubricate the piston pin with clean 50 weight aviation engine oil and insert the piston pin into one side of the piston pin boss. We have now prepared the cylinder and piston for installation. Rotate the crankshaft to place the affected cylinder connecting rod in the top center position. With help from an assistant, place cylinder and piston assembly over the connecting rod. Insert piston pin through the connecting rod. Using a ring compressor, have your assistant compress the number four ring and carefully work the cylinder onto the piston until the number four piston ring and piston skirt have been installed into the cylinder. Remove the ring compressor and continue to work the cylinder onto the cylinder deck studs and through bolts until firmly seated against the cylinder mount flange base, taking care not to damage the deck studs or through bolt threads. 
Lubricate the through bolt threads and cylinder deck stud threads with clean 50 weight aviation engine oil and install the deck stud nuts and through bolt nuts. Notice, engines with the seventh cylinder deck stud use a stud nut with a conical face. Ensure the stud nuts are installed in the correct locations. For engines with the seven stud, lubricate the seven stud with clean 50 weight aviation engine oil and install the seven stud bracket and conical face stud nut. Now that we have installed the cylinder onto the crankcase, we must properly torque the cylinder stud nuts, through bolt nuts, and seven stud nuts. Warning. Proper torquing practices cannot be overemphasized. Torque values are provided as a convenient method of achieving correct preloading of highly stressed fasteners. If the fasteners are not properly plated, the fastener threads are not clean and free of damage or are not properly lubricated, the correct fastener preload will not be achieved even though the specified torque value is reached. For this reason, it is critical that all fasteners be ins it is critical that all fasteners be inspected for proper plating, inspected for proper plating, lubricated prior to torquing. Failure to verify a fastener's serviceability or to properly lubricate the fastener prior to assembly and torquing will result in the fastener not being properly preloaded and subsequent failure of the engine may occur. When installing a complete set of new cylinders, opposing cylinders must be torqued simultaneously, so you will need an assistant with another calibrated torque wrench on the opposite side of the engine. Warning. Even if only one cylinder is being installed, the through bolt nuts on the opposite side of the engine must be properly lubricated and torqued. Failure to torque through bolt nuts on both sides of the engine will result in incorrect through bolt preloading, possible loss of main bearing crush, and engine failure. Cylinder installation requires a three step torque sequence. First, Torque cylinder base nuts to 50% of the specified torque value using the sequence shown in the applicable engine overhaul manual. Do not torque the cylinder through bolt nuts during this initial torque sequence. Second, torque the cylinder through bolt nuts and cylinder base nuts in the sequence shown in the applicable engine overhaul manual. Torque through bolt and cylinder base nuts to the specified torque value for the cylinder base nuts. Third, torque the through bolt nuts on both sides of the engine to their specified torque value. For engines with the seven stud, torque to the specified value after torquing through bolts. Always refer to the applicable engine maintenance manual, overhaul manual, and service bulletins to obtain the specified torque values for the engine you are working on. With the cylinder installed and properly torqued, we are ready to complete the cylinder installation by installing the valve train components. Ensure all push rods, push rod housings, rocker arms, rocker shafts, and rocker covers have been cleaned using an approved solvent. Verify that all oil passages in push rods and rocker arms are clean and free of any debris. Compress the push rod housing spring with the spring compressor and retainer or equivalent and slide the compressed spring over the crankcase end of the pushrod housing. Install pushrod housings using new housing seals and washers.